Hi guys, welcome back to Yildiz Readings 5D. For those of you that don't know me from a bar of soap, I'm a psychic medium, I'm a twin flame coach. I cover astrology, moon energy, and psychic channeled messages. If you feel this vibe is really your tribe, please come along and join us for up-to-date information relating to how this moon energy is going to affect your zodiac sign you can stream forward and stream back and it has the elements as well as the zodiac placements stay tuned for the most up-to-date information and to sharper reports inside this without further ado let's get into the energy of this moon and how it can affect your zodiac sign love and light guys let's get into it Welcome to the full moon energy for Libra that is on the 28th and it's at the critical degree point which is 8 degrees. Now in this video we're going to have a bit of a chat astrologically what's happening, what we've moved away from with that new moon in Pisces, how we transited and what's up in the hoods astrologically and how it can affect each zodiac sign. Now you will be able to within this video stream forward and stream back to find your zodiac. It will be titled and you can look at your sun, moon and rising. If you do want to book in, you can go to the link directly below. Let's have a quick chat about what can be coming up with this and what we really moved through through the previous moon phase. Now I did have a little bit of a ramble relating to the new moon in Pisces which you can go back and see it especially if you're brand new on the page and you want to see the way we were psychoanalyzing and breaking down that new moon in Pisces. Now it is deeply intuitive and now that we've moved to the full moon in Libra the shadow sign is Aries and we currently have Aries and Chiron at the moment and I will look at the positions in astrology to see anything major that we would need to be worried about concerned but it can be go 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 energy and it can be very passionate. We currently have Mars in Gemini so it'll be our actions, our words. We need to be careful that we're articulating things correctly, but it will be a more active energy. It's a lot of sacral chakra I do feel coming up and it's a lot of solar plexus. So anything really now that we're wanting to tie up in a sense of loose end, get back into balance. Now that we have Mercury direct, that was from the new moon in Pisces from the 13th, we're having that forward momentum and we're not feeling potentially as tired and we're able to now shift some of those things and create more balance in our life. Now Libra is a very Venus energy, it's very balanced in orientation and I did say over the last few years Libras really collectively have changed so the way you relate to that personally within your energy is not overcompensating but it's looking at what the last three months moving up to this space for the full moon in Libra is in a sense of what, what do you need to leave behind what items do you need to tie up it's not the best time to start anything new it's better to clear out the clutter really good time to clear your house energy uh, I always promote of the full moons that we do clear the energy and that's due to the fact that um, you know it's, it's higher in energy for aggression um, but it's also quite emotional because it can be purgatory but the new moon energies you know coming into it we can have a similar transit and then the positivity the unsureness we can um, experience in a new moon is you know it's very intuitive in nature it's hunch energy especially because the last one was Pisces so it's not completely what you can see it's what you're sensing what you've what you've learned through that process. Now, yes, it can be relating to justice. It can be relating to what we feel as balance and fairness in give and take. But it's also about tying up loose ends and I will go into it in your chart and I'm just gonna flip quickly and have a quick look at the screen and then we'll get into potentials that can come through with this full moon in Libra. Okay, Lan, let's briefly jump over to the chart. Now the one thing that was standing out really largely to me was a few days prior to the full moon in Libra which as I mentioned the shadow sign is Aries is the fact that we will have the sun in Aries. Now the sun is how we show up it's the energy we're pouring into circumstances it also can be egoic um, so it depends from a spiritual nature where you're at where triggers can come from now number one I will say moving towards the full moon which can be purgatory let's just be mindful of this we're gonna have Venus in Aries right the moon emotions needing to get some balance what justices what fairness is within our connections the passion we hold for things um, 
because we're having oppositions occurring to Chiron, let me jump down. So on the 28th, which is the date of the full moon, we have, oh goodness, we do have the sun in opposition to the moon. So where our emotions and our actions, there's tension points there. We also have the moon both making an opposition to Venus and making an opposition to Neptune and Pisces. So what I'm merely suggesting, especially from the Chiron positions, is that we do need to be mindful of A, we'll be able to look at the shadow inside of our hopes and dreams, but what will come to a head is the fact that, you know, with our wounds, yes, we could be, be showing where our egos are or where the pain body is at, what our perspective was, what our view was, why we, you know, putting energy into things. So pre-warned, forearmed, be mindful at marriages, contracts, partnerships, full moon and Libra, how we can get in balance is by facing any circumstances of adversity, looking at potentially where, you know, we're needing that balance, keeping the communication open, but yes, you can be triggered. So we're going to have a look at the charts in a sense of what we're going to have to tie up in the loose end. I'm going to mention in this video, the shadow sign Aries, due to the fact that we will have Venus transiting, it is passionate. Now in a healthy energy with Aries, we can pour more energy into those circumstances. In a trigger-worthy energy, we can mask people. Uh, we can be aggressive in nature. Um, we can be maybe zealous. Um, the wounds are there. So because it's making oppositions and it's making conjunction points, we will be showing how we're standing in our way. And it's not necessarily that you can remove the wound, okay? It's there, right? Let's just call it what it is. Let's address the elephant in the room. So there's a vibration of a wound that for the next seven years with Aries and Chiron is there. And for us to address this, it kind of makes sense because we're having Mars transit on the 23rd of April next month into the zodiac sign Cancer. So I've been warning you guys about this for a bit. We need to be prepared that we're in alignment with doing the things we need to do. And you can't avoid circumstances. So it's a bit like if it's there, um, I burnt my hand on the stove. So do I never touch the stove? Oh, maybe I can find a healthier way to deal with that. This is giving us an opportunity to see the flaw in our logic to do with the interactions and connections. And maybe we may say something beautiful on that. Maybe we might be able to address it head on um, without a confrontation uh, and, and look at a, a different way that we can address that. But it can be quite passionate, let's put it that way, especially to form ways. Ease yourself in, ease yourself through it. It will be new beginnings, but it's the steps we're going to have to take. So from a balance point of view, a lot of us energetically, we've had the nodes in Gemini. We had, um, you know, Mars move into Gemini, which is uh, social expectations of things on our plate, having to tie up those loose ends. Busy, 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 right? <sighs> Can we tie up those loose ends in a timely fashion? Maybe not. You know, we're, we're putting it in a very small pocket, which is a two-week interval, really, after being very fatigued with the Virgo moon and the, the Pisces new moon. So rationally speaking, we need to be realistic. Uh, it will show us where maybe um, that's going to take a little bit more time and it could take, you know, two weeks after the full moon. But continue on, look at logic and rational, maybe shift some things around in your life to create that balance. What's causing the imbalance? Is it an emotion? Is it an environment? Is it a circumstance? Let's have a look at those charts and see how we can deal with this. And I'll try and give you the tips and tricks, but I will mention the Aries placement. So the first ones up are our beautiful earth signs. So let's have a look at the earth signs. For those of you that are Virgo, Capricorn, Taurus, we're going to have a look at your energy and how this transit is going to be shaping and changing your life and how you can look at it and manage it. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, wherever you land on this video, the imagery does help you move forward and move back. So look at your sun, moon and rising. Also be mindful that you can locate your zodiac sign by dragging it forward, dragging it back. But do stay tuned for the guided meditation in the end. Let's get into the energy for your zodiac sign. Okay, Virgo, let's have a look at your chart. Now, it has been a pretty intense month for you guys, especially after we had that 
um, moon energy transit your first house now Libra is falling in your second house now second house can relate to income your professional resources it can be self-esteem it can be your health and your diet and your well-being and emotions relating to it creating balance due to external energies now we did have Aquarius transiting your sixth house which was relating to health work your direct environment your habits your routines and your healthy boundaries now <clears throat> in a sense of the area that Aquarius landed as it's going direct like I said we've got that two week interval where we're trying to cram a lot into it to trying to get back on balance to try and get to the point we can change some circumstances some of you may actually have a new sense of income coming in one way is going a new way is coming in trying to get the balance in that it might be the circumstances you're needing to leave behind so that you can achieve those things is it a direct environment doesn't mean leaving a job doesn't mean looking at maybe your budget and a more balanced approach and a logical approach now during mercury retrograde that would have been uh, very problematic we currently have mars in gemini to get us moving forward and your career sector is really um, itemized so to speak so mars and gemini and the north node in gemini is beautifully aspected the triggers can be to do with endings very pluto in nature so emotions relating to does this mean it's over this is okay is my is my financial position going to be okay it's emotions it's eighth house you know um maybe regret maybe uh what would i say fair base frequency but emotions relating to tying up loose ends and working really hard in circumstances and then maybe hopes being dashed on it doesn't mean to say it has to be a complete ending a lot of times it can be a viewpoint it doesn't have to be leaving a circumstance it can be gaining more inside mercury retrograde is showing us where flaws in it was like I said not necessarily leaving things but transforming that domain how that feels to you what you would need to do to make those things happen so you will know how mercury retrograde affected you what the writing was on the wall but you do need to pay attention to eighth house which can be gosh we had near misses Uranus and Taurus it made squares it caused difficulty we had Mars and Taurus there it's all a subject matter of a conversational piece moving forward and there's storylines we can look within the zodiacs so please do look at how that affected you what were the warning signs on the wall how can you now change your perspective instead of falling back into fair base frequency of okay I dodged a bullet uh, what if it happens again could you change something and it doesn't mean we're creating pyramids for perfectionism it means we're looking at a healthier way to deal with it maybe it's we're doing too much maybe it's it's you know it's something in a spiritual need uh you know a need for a holiday something to that degree but I, I'm really thinking um sometimes eighth house is the house of healthy codependency is deeper intimacy connections it's give and take it can be daycare for instance and okay so I need to do x y and z I'm working career sector um, <clears throat> with Capricorn on your fifth house house of responsibilities it can be creativity and this is just one example if you need me to interpret your chart feel free to book a reading and I can look at it in a viewpoint of what you can be dealing with personally so the eighth house is the give and take but it's I go to work a I get paid that's the healthy guy it's something you can depend on and it's an exchange but it's learning that you know it's almost self-worth energy second house so this is what's coming up you're letting the old version of you go therefore you will naturally manifest beautiful things coming towards you but yes during this full moon it can be purgatory there can be fair base frequencies um trying to get balance maybe that circumstances outside of control eighth house can be maybe you're dependent on a circumstance at this point and you're wanting to change that and not have that in your life but it will relate all very personal depending on what you're going through but it can be purgatory it will shift chakra tips for you throat chakra definitely as well base chakra due to the fact that if you feel spiritually you're out of balance and fair base frequency comes up more than likely sacral chakra so if you're getting agitated gut anxiety fair balance the sacral chakra if you're feeling from a communication point of view that you feel very verbal 
balance the throat chakra speak your truth to do with things and then document what you think the problems are step back from it like a painting and then address it and by taking little steps the burden will come off you but really get to a point where you can sit with your emotions on that day and don't think it's going to stay like that forever guys it's very emotional at the moment know that it is going to shift and know that you can actually shift that paradigm you're living in and it is going to get better okay let's keep it short and punchy just to give you all the info you need number one Taurus I would say for you guys keep an eye on um, communication um, emotions because we have Mars in your second house pay attention to the way you're communicating you also may be working extremely hard uh, you know to develop your resources self-esteem creating healthy boundaries because the full moon in Libra is linking to your sixth house and when it comes to Venus work romance it's second and um, seventh house and Libra is really a Venus sign so we do need to look at both those energies so communication um, networking sending resumes out getting jobs done uh, building upon that we have Mars there so we do need to be mindful that we can Mars people but you also have Aries on the 12th house and remember I did mention with this moon energy being a full moon in Libra and because there's aspects occurring with Chiron we need to be careful of where Aries is falling and for you it does come down to your 12th house which can be psychology it's how is this affecting my health okay how can I create balance how do I need to tie up these loose ends is it my work environment is it my health that's affecting uh, are there habits I need to leave uh, especially when the second house and the seventh house are there it can be emotions our psychology and our body mind body soul check mind body soul Taurus keep grounded moving forward at your ease but you you will find you'll have the energy of Mars in the second house use it resourcefully with Venus being in Aries we're looking at those areas and we can build deeper connections um, this can be looking at um, the energy maybe meditating upon what you would need to do to change some, some things around so even from a relationship point of view you could potentially be up in your head a little bit trust the process do what you can physically uh, which you know I would definitely say um, clear your crown chakra uh, throat chakra can come up for you potentially it can be overactive but move into the sacral chakra which can be anger and aggression if that is flaring up okay my beautiful air signs now we have Taurus Gemini Libra no set format but you can stream forward and stream back as I mentioned and I will incorporate this inside the video to um, tell you how to prepare tell you how to what chakras can be coming up if it comes up energetically and how to balance that Chiron energy because it's really coming through with Venus transiting plus because we're having um, you know testing situations relating to Chiron at the moment but we do have beautiful aspects happening with Saturn and Aquarius relating to these areas of loan so we will be able to take that responsibility okay beautiful Gemini so now you guys are in the north node which we still currently have Mars there so you may be feeling the world's coming at you and too much is going on now I would strongly suggest don't be so hard on yourself because this can be a very busy psychological time especially with first house placement it's me 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 you know and it feels like that you could feel the finger is pointed at you you could feel transformations are pretty testing um now I will say we do need to look at the placement of Aries for you and we also need to look at where uh, Libra is now Libra is connecting in with the fifth house so the shadow sign which is currently where Venus is going to be at during this time is going to be in Aries and it is making interesting aspects to Chiron which can complicate things now the benefiting point is going to be Aquarius so this is for the bigger picture so yes we do need to trust it so from a spiritual point of view there can be values coming up so we have to take responsibility there may be responsible situations relating to um, the group to a family especially with fifth house with uh, creative ventures and you may feel uh, it's all on you separately when it does come down to your hopes dreams and aspirations some of you guys are like 
When's that going to happen? With all my creative projects, when can I bring them together? Uh, with work, when can I bring it together? How am I going to do, how, how can I do everything? How can I create the balance to make people happy? Well, number one, we can't actually make people happy. We're not, you know, we're not Gaia. Uh, but we can try to have compassion, love and understanding, but we also must exhibit that to ourselves. With your hopes, dreams and aspirations, moving through this transit, it's going to give you some themes about what you believe in. Um, you know, a lot of your education may come into play where you've got to utilise it. It can be subjects to do with children at school. Uh, it also can be just very spiritually Am I on purpose? Am I doing the things I was meant to do? You know, is this group working with me? Can I work with them? How do I move it about? I do feel from a working point of view, Gemini, it has been pretty testing for you guys. Now you do have that good old axis of the first and the seventh house, predominantly because the nodes are in your zodiac sign. So the shadow energy is, it's you and your relationship sector, you and your connections. Uh, can be you with your diet, you with your, so it's, it's first and seventh house. And it's, I've been through that transit on a personal level. And I can say at times it was greatly, greatly beneficial because it really educated me, but very separately. Sometimes I was quite wowed at the revelations I had inside my mind. How, you know, how did I do that? Was that my belief about what my role was in a connection? So it's very educational and it will really develop you. And it doesn't mean you're not going to have a relationship. Yes, I will say, some of you, if you really felt you weren't resonating with the connection, it may have gone by the wayside. However, the beautiful aspect is, it doesn't mean things can't heal. It doesn't mean they can't go to that new version, that transformed version. It was maybe where we were initially comfortable uh, because the South Node is always that. And that doesn't mean that I'm judging a circumstance. It means with the South and the North Node, you, you know, by astrology, it states we had grown into that. It was comfortable. Now we're evolving into the energy of Gemini, which is your zodiac sign. And Gemini, you're changing too. So, you know, what's the key to it? Growing, being a student, seeing other people's point of view. How did you think something was? How did they think something was? So through that transformative state with whoever you're directly dealing with, that transformation can come through and you will find you will attract a very new vibration and a less codependent vibration of having a spiritual connection. So forgive yourself, understand it takes two to tango, sometimes several, especially because we've got group energy there, having to do too much, spreading yourself like, you know, butter, um, looking at the bigger picture of where you're going and then tapping into, okay, how do we, and especially because you've got the second house and the third house. The second house, you've got cancer there. Uh, your emotions relating to it, you know, providing um, you're very family orientated. Uh, you're very, you can work in a team really well. But the third house with Leo, uh, we can't always be strong all the time. Um, sometimes it's things we do and we unconsciously don't know we're doing it. And deep down inside, we might be feeling, gee, I'm really tired. I can't really do that right now. So just be really gentle with yourself and know that your hopes and dreams and aspirations are going to come through. Some of those can be changing. Some of them you may find you don't resonate with anymore. And that's okay too. It's okay if you change. We change and we grow and we can do that together. And, and sometimes the triggers that we cause on other people, they change too, eccentrically, you know, accidentally through it. I would say that I can see this to be very, very positive for you because you're going to be larger than life and it's going to help you move to the distance. Now, it's mutual understandings I see coming through and it's bridging it with value systems and I do see it to be beneficial. I really do see this trans transit to be beneficial and I'm a Libra, so... Call me crazy, but I do see this to be a potential healing portal for us preparing for next month. All I can say, Aquarius, is I bet you're feeling pretty grateful that we have Mercury direct because there were a lot of heavy hitting um, planets in your house with the first house and you also had subjects to do with home coming up previously. So it has been a testing time. Now, moving forward, the two areas we need to look at, maybe even three, because Saturn, the Lord of Restriction and Responsibility, is going to be showing up to give us all a hand this month. And that is, it's related to you. Um, you're very sudden Uranian energy in nature, connected into astrology. So this should, if you can work with it effectively, some of you are having a Saturn return, some of my love and thoughts are with you. 
guide yourself into it. Number one, Saturn is making really positive aspects to Aries and Chiron, which is helping us see where we need to take accountability in things, or maybe where another individual does. But we do need to be very objective. Aries in Chiron is how are we part of a circumstance? How can we transform that wound? Because first house is us. Where can we within our control? And it's there for seven years, guys. So, you know, I'm not magic. It's up in the hoods. <clears throat> and I'm trying to give you the tools to you to have the tools to help you. So the full moon in Libra is occurring in your ninth house. Value systems can come up. Am I, am I moving? Are things moving? If you're dealing with business ventures, networking, communication, it can be extremely busy. Mars is in your fifth house. It's a very fertile time for growth for you. That can be uh, where conceiving a child can come through. It can be, uh, you know, keeping social. You can be very active at the moment, very, very creative in the mind. But I also see communication is going to be the key in the circumstance to do with your contracts. Now, you might have wounds relating to maybe the people don't see my vision. They don't understand my point of view. There's... Uh, two sides to every story but sometimes there's external there's above below external you know so all you can do is be authentically you and it doesn't mean trying to prove yourself to people it means just coming and showing up trusting in the process and then releasing it there could be some throat chakra going on for you guys where it um, is affecting you you feel uh, your day-to-day -day routine you got to fight for it you go you know it's very tiring with travel and things to that degree be very careful driving I would really suggest that, especially with Mars hitting a third house placement and we have um, awkward dynamics occurring with the moon, with Venus, with Mercury, um, testing conversations. So stop, look, listen. That's a bit of a, you know, we have an advert over here in Australia that's stop, look and listen. So just from the throat chakra point of view, trust, pause think speak if you need to talk about things talk about them but try to keep the tone of the vibration down now if another person is raising their voice at you and it's getting quite agitational and you think they don't get it take a breath blow it out until you can cool down and when I say communicate effectively, it's okay. And some of these things are going to come up for all of us. Old wounds from the past are going to come up. They're going to come up, I'm just saying. Now, does not mean the same thing's going to happen? No. Can it? Potentially. But if we change the way we deal with it, and it's something that needs to be viewed because it's holding us back, maybe our ego is saying something needs to be a very fixed way, we need to be very flexible to hear each other out. Be very gentle. Um, adhering to your schedule and your responsibilities and keeping things in balance if you want life to move and grow, be it with study, networking, connections, um, <clears throat> your values, being on purpose and communicating what you mean, saying what you mean and meaning what you say will do benefits for you. Uh, if we're unsure about that we could get behind but I feel from a completion point of view at work in love it's like you kind of had an ideal something could be where it should be and maybe it's not that way so it's affecting you it can come up pre-bond forearm to tying up loose ends you'll have the ability to so trust the process get paperwork loose ends documentation emails checked uh, similar to Mercury, but not the same. It's a completion of a cycle journal. Uh, at the end of that cycle, sit with it. Don't force anything new right now. Uh, look through it, assess it a little bit like a Venus retrograde, and then move through the vibration. Give it a week or two. And as we move forward, we're then going to have, um, I believe it should be a new moon in Aries. So we'll have a new way we can deal with those circumstances. And for you, it's going to be the way you communicate. It could be vehicles and transportation. It could be brand new technology, but it's also how we deal with that style of communicating and doing our day-to-day -day routine um, in our own life, a solution potentially. 
I don't know why Libra, but, you know, I think we tend to need comedy around this time. And, I mean, I'm Libra, so I feel ya. Okay. Now, yes, this is your first house placement. It is a full moon. The way you see yourself, the way you're showing up, you can be a little bit critical towards yourself at the moment. You might feel um, first and seventh house placement, Libra. What can I say? You know, it's, it's self-esteem based. It's it's value points, it's resources, it's abilities to deal with circumstances. And I feel because the second house, because when it comes to relationships, remember, we've got Venus there. Uh, Libra is also a Venus sign. So Venus at the moment is an Aries. You're having a Venus return, so to speak. Um, yet yeah, return of the Mac babies, you're looking at it and you're going, okay, am I passionate about this? Are these contracts working? Are these connections working? Um, is there something I can do to change that? Is it a me thing? Um, do I need to change my perspective or my view of this? For you, it's a very personal thing right now. You, you could be very hard on yourself thinking, I, I, I'm not a hundred people, but at the same time, you could be thinking of creative ways you can change that. You also could be getting to a point that you don't resonate with particular things. Um, so how do I see that? How do I, how do I articulate it rather? First house is very personal. It's the self. Um, it's the way people see us. It's the way we're showing up. And we have the shadow sign of maybe people projecting at you what they need you to be. And wounds relating to, um, you know, what, it's quite funny because the liberals at a point, I would really strongly say, uh, we're accused of being very imbalanced and very indecisive and I, I beg to differ. I don't feel Libras are, Libras are imbalanced. I feel for a very, very long time, uh, Libras did have a very compassionate heart to the detriment of their health. I really do feel that. And I do feel collectively through the last, I would say four years, Maybe even a bit longer, especially last year with Mars and retrograde and Aries and Chiron retrograde at the same time. That was oh, horrible for Libras. It was very testing emotionally, spiritually and physically. So because of that, I would say during this um, full moon in Libra, something's got to shift, right? It's a return of Venus energy. We also are not necessarily over giving we're not the same individuals the wound may come up but you won't react to it in the same fashion and the reason is because with all that of what has passed Libra and we're coming back to this full moon it's like maybe in an egoic way when we overcompensated to give because we understood that individual in a contract or a connection seventh house placement Venus is there we may have understood, um, but I do feel now Libra also understands the notion that we can't be everything for everyone. So second house placement, we have Scorpio there. You're already tapping into the energy of, could you do that forever? Where is the feasibility of that? Where is the resources? Cycles changing, evolving, and, and a great mystery, but it's, it's all a transformative state. So there's some sense of cycle that's changing. Emotions and self-esteem can come up. You could intuitively feel that yes, something has to shift and change. That could be the wound, the way you're relating to it. Is it a you situation? Is it them? I feel through this transit, you'll know. And I don't want to presume because it's all very individual collectively. It's very personal, you know, unless I coached you or, you know, looked at your chart directly and spoke to you, you know, some, some Libras, it's been romance coming up. Some Libras, it's been very much um, children and family. It depends on where the um, transformative cycle is coming through. For you guys, it is a very personal experience, but you may find yourself to be quite critical. I would say don't jump and do anything new yet. Sometimes we can be drawn to just hacking the hair off and cutting it and changing it and coloring it. New new outfit, new this, new that. You know, throw the baby out with the baby bathwater. And it's only an example analogy, not uh, literal. Okay, I'm not like that. 
I do feel intuitively you guys will know, but you need to be gentle with yourself. It would be a great time to clear the home, be productive, um, sit with it, try not to be too critical of self. Uh, wounds relating to emotions and maybe feeling that it was, uh, you know, and it goes shadow side and Aries will be doing the same guys. So at some point you may move into the past related energy because it's Venus, but it's also Aries and Chiron, which is wounds relating to the past. You may feel that every time you're trying to chase something, something goes wrong. Uh, you may feel you're getting into a relationship and the synchronistic events keep occurring. So it can be a pretty testing time moving in and out. It will pass Libra. But there's something in walking through that tunnel and moving through it and maybe making some very firm decisions about what you want can be the solution to a lot of these things. So I would suggest um, be gentle on yourself, rest, recoup. We had Pisces, the previous energy affecting your health sector. Healthy boundaries, working, maybe overworking, diet, routine. Um, as we've moved away from that, we're now looking at how these interconnections can be affecting it, but also how you within your power can change these things and make choices. Yes, Libra, you are lovable. Yes, Libra, you are worthy. Will the story repeat? Libra, yes, good things can come. Please trust that. Fire signs, baby. Okay, let's have a look at the fire signs and what could be coming up for you guys with the astrology and how to directly be prepared. You can stream forward and stream back as I'm grabbing the charts. So for those of you, Leo, Aries and Sagittarius, we're going to get into your energy. Please leave a comment. I'd love to hear how this resonates. And yes, it will play out over the next two weeks. So, you know, stop by again, save the video use this as movement board um give me a heads up okay leo let's have a look at your energy now we have libra hitting your third house so communication um your day-to-day -day routine uh, expect to be busy running um after things tying up loose ends busy 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 mars is also in the house of gemini and that can be to do with hopes, dreams, and aspirations. It can be hobbies, sports, pastimes. It can become a very active time for you. Also, because we have Venus in the ninth house, this can be to do with travel and relocation and movement. Uh, there might be fears coming up relating to that. Scared that maybe a partner will leave. Scared maybe a relationship may have not gone to the next level. Um, something to do with people's value systems, ethics, and morals. Um, you know, what your purpose is, what you should do. And to balance it, ironically enough, the ninth house, it is to utilize the third house, which currently um, for you guys does have Libra there. So the balance and the solution to it is going to be to articulate some of your fears, to speak your truth. Um, you know, talk to those individuals. Sometimes it can be uh, maybe, you know, needing to look at it from a more um, balanced style. And this can be journaling, writing things down, but very separately uh, with work, with love. The Lord of Responsibility is in your house of relationships. Now, this is a very personal transit, okay? So viewpoints in, um, maybe owning your truth. There could be also legalities and contracts relating to things, um, you know, signing of contracts and things to that degree and hustle and bustle relating to hopes and dreams and aspirations. Now we'll say, because we do have Saturn, the Lord of Restrictions, currently sitting in your seventh house and Libra is very a seventh house energy. What you may find is relating to responsibilities, there could be a group situation that is a group responsibility, not a one-sided situation. But it's also how we have to um, look at our own responsibility inside of our connection. So that's where Saturn is going to come in and go, and it's doing it to all of us guys. It's not a personal thing on Leo or whatever zodiac sign I've mentioned in this video. It's where Saturn falls. So for you, it happens to fall in your seventh house. This could be you physically looking at, okay, how is the circumstance with my contracts affecting um, groups of people around me? Not just me, groups of people. How am I then affecting that? What is the responsibility? Um, okay, if I need to do that, what do I... If I'm dealing with responsibilities with group energies, family, etc., how do I navigate that? 
How can I do that more effectively? Even if I'm nervous with the ninth house of, am I on mission? Am I doing the right thing? Um, maybe situations with school, value systems, travel. Do I stay? Do I go? All of those things can be coming up. Now, ninth house can be also sibling related dynamics, you know, family related dynamics, issues happening there. And home for you we do happen to have Scorpio in your fourth house, which I will discuss in the next moon transit and astrology update. I'm going to try and get it out ahead of time. We'll see how I go. I tell you, it still feels like Mercury retrograde. Um, because we're having Pluto going retrograde, uh, you know, next month. So fourth house and things relating to home can come up. Children, family, home. So I think the viewpoint, it's a little bit like tunnel vision, but it's we need to pair into the shadow energy, tying up loose ends, keeping communication open, balancing, making balanced decisions, talking uh, to individuals to maybe, it could be to potentially create the peace, but it, it more feels documentation to me, signing of documents and things to that degree. Now, I do feel the wound may come from value systems, so be careful. Understand that not all of us has the same viewpoint. It doesn't mean that love isn't there, and it doesn't mean that problems can't be resolved. But I do see that coming up, and there could be sudden changes and transformations, but definitely next month. Sagittarius. Okay, we have the Lord of Restriction in your third house, Saturn. Okay, it will be well and truly direct um, by the time we are having the full moon. But we do also have um, the Libra moon we need to look at. So hopes, dreams, and aspirations. Now, the reason I'm going to mention Aries is because Venus is going to be transiting there. It will affect our workplace. It will affect the energy we're pouring into things. It's where our wound comes from, and it will be our intimate connect connections. And that can also be uh, connections point blank, sorry, the things we like and things to that degree. Now, we do have fifth house placement in Venus at the moment. So from a responsibility setting, in growing with your emotions, your self-esteem, um, there, there can be, um, I don't know why I'm saying government, contracts relating to governments, expectations, responsibility inside of actions. Um, in our relationships, there might be, again, responsibilities linking to um, children, especially because we've got Mars there at the moment for you guys. You've got Mars and Gemini hitting your seventh house. Uh, yes, it could be a bit testing. You might be working extremely hard and needing to pour a lot of energy into your relationships, contracts, and partnerships. Libra is to do with your hopes and dreams. So yes, you may this week be able to tie up a loose end and start. Some of the things you're doing, you may be going into question mode about it. Sip it for a few days either side. Don't jump the gun straight away. Move through the vibration. Face the wound relating to unfulfilled dreams and that the energy you put in is not coming to fruition because it's not over till that what sings, okay? And that's really what I'm saying. There's something you're meant to learn through this transformation. Because we have Jupiter in Aquarius, and we've got Saturn in Aquarius, which is very much Jupiter energy is you. You're learning to do it in a day-to-day -day movement routine, the direct steps, bringing groups together, bridging situations, responsibilities, restrictions of wanting those hopes and dreams. Um, it's a bit like saying that I want to have a world record to climb Mount Everest in the fastest time. And um, you're getting all your, you know, your suit pants, your, your coat, you've got everything ready. And then we take one step up and it's like, uh, you know, I'm going to do it. Uh, it is actually direct steps, the responsibility, or perhaps it's say doing that, but then not taking the compass with you, responsibility. Uh, well, okay, I'm kind of lost now. What do I do? Intuition based. But it's the, the, all the small steps you make will make the world a difference. Even if it feels very restrictive and growth orientated, sometimes we can get a little bit rebellious and it's like, do I have to do all these things? Can I skip a step? Be careful of communication actions, thoughts, um, they could come back to us. So also because we did have the new moon in Pisces, this big, big changes relating to home and family in your routine. 
what I'm seeing coming through is don't quit just before it's over. If you do need to leave something, leave it on an amicable term. Wounds coming up can be addressed, especially um, to romance, co-creative endeavors. Um, but sometimes it can be just speaking it to ourselves because misunderstandings can arise from wounds. Uh, so if it's just something really personal you're going through, I'd say sit with it for a little bit, acknowledge it and say, hey, you know, I'm really frustrated that some of my things that I'm wanting to do um, haven't really been going according to plan. It's, it's really testing me. I'm pouring a lot of Mars energy into it. Uh, there could be issues that work for some of you because Mars is in Gemini. So be really careful with authority energies because you've got Capricorn in the second. Um, it's where money can come from in the second house, but it's also uh, the resources we have and, you know, our self-confidence, our material value, our skills and, and, and our alliances, so to speak. So because you've got Capricorn there and we are moving into April, this moon energy will transit over to there where we will have the shadow energy of Pluto going retrograde, which is currently in the house of Capricorn. So really be careful to those responsibilities. We may be viewing and reflecting upon that and having to change things up. Okay, my beautiful water signs, let's have a look at what can be coming up for your zodiac signs, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, and you uh, you guys are very um, water energy, but definitely Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces, you're deeply intuitive, so I would say Cancer and Pisces, Moon, um, this can be affecting you guys, but let's get into the energy. Now, you can stream forward, you can stream back and find your zodiac sign, it's in the thumbnails. Also, if you need to make a booking, you can go to the link directly below. Stay tuned after this video to actually have the God of Meditation at the end. Okay, beautiful Pisces. Now, for you guys, we just moved through that new moon in Pisces energy, and yes, new moon should be beautiful and positive, right? Um, yes. It also can feel very personal. You can feel very tired, especially from a crown chakra point of view. Now, you did have Aquarius on your 12th house, um, and it has been transiting there, which could have been a little bit taxing for you psychologically, spiritually, especially when it came to groups and people. It's like, no, no drama. I just want the world to get along. Um, Mars is in your second house at the moment. Uh, and when I say Mars, it's Aries. So I don't mean that. Venus is transiting your second house. It's also where Chiron is. And as I've mentioned in the other videos, I'm gonna mention where the full moon in Libra is gonna be, which currently is in the eighth house, and where Venus is due to the fact that Aries is Libra's shadow sign. But it's also because it's occurring in astrology and it's transiting Venus. So number one, I can say with our wounds, your wound relates to your second house and it's going to be pushed and prodded for the next seven years and that's for all of us wherever that Aries placement is is a coming now if it was sextiling at all times that's great you're moving beyond it you're liberating yourself it doesn't define you and none of us are perfect so these shadow energies do come up now it's romance okay it's lovely it's passionate it's fiery it's Mars it is in your resources. You may have felt that you had to fight for the things that you have. You may have to have been uh, very masculine in nature to provide for yourself or create very firm boundaries with individuals. Self-made people, I tell you. I also feel when you put your energy into things, you can achieve those things. Now, currently we have Mars and Gemini, so family, running around doing everything for everyone maybe misunderstandings if you've got children there can be misunderstandings oh i thought you were taking the trash out no i thought you were we've got to be careful with our communication and i think a lot of work if you're putting into home and family mars in a sense doesn't have to be fights but it can pour energy into getting your routine in order which is a lot of what i think you guys are doing at the moment getting home in order getting your routine, creating healthy boundaries with individuals, but picking and choosing selectively as to who you're dealing with and what you can and can't do. Now, because we have Libra transiting your eighth house, um, tying up loose ends relating to paperwork, I'd really strongly say. Eighth house can be to do with births, deaths, endings, taxation, legalities. It's also the house of healthy codependency. 
So that can be very similar to, hey, I've got to go to work and at the end of the week I'm going to get a pay pack. That's the healthy codependency. It can be, hey, I need to go to work. My, my child needs to go to daycare. So I'll pay you the fees. I'll get to work and it's a healthy, something you can depend on in a foundational sense. I do feel many of you, um, look, if you've lost someone, for instance, I think you're going to be making, trying to make closure with that. But maybe you feel, um, you know, did you fight enough? Did they fight enough for you? Uh, did you have to be everything to that? Uh, were you passionate about that? I do think you guys could have been over the last few weeks really thinking about connections point blank zero. And I might have been very mentally fatiguing, especially at a very, it's almost like trying to mathematically understand it and trying to understand the increases of how you work. Uh, you can be putting that down to bed. You can be looking at the reality that you really do need to have people that work with you. What is balance? What is fairness? What is justice? Uh, there was a poem I wrote on in relation to the Pisces moon. Do feel free to go back and look at that if you want. It was in both of them really. I mentioned it. I did do one little chit chat with um, Giggle Glimmer Shelley, who is a... Um, a dear friend of mine as well as a subscriber so you know all of you guys are very very deeply appreciated but she we were laughing about the um, notion of having to look at something and seeing it for what it really is and sometimes that can be quite painful but I do feel when we make peace with it we understand what our needs are for you guys um, Yes, it could be signing paperwork. It could be um, finalizing one chapter and moving to a new one. I do see this to be very positive. Uh, you could be really um, building on your self-esteem and, and looking at uh, what you need to do. Now, from an employment point of view, I do see signing contracts, but read the fine print. It's not Mercury retrograde, but look at the, the um, ability for it to be sound and balanced. Look at it with a very practical eye. Um, even in your connections, old wounds and thoughts um, to do with the give and take and what you had, how much you had to put in versus them, they can come up. Uh, just trust it, but don't feel that you have to give everything. That does not mean it's love. Don't feel that you have to give your blood, sweat and tears. It's, no, that's not necessarily true. But wounds relating to that may come up of um, lack of mentality. Did I do enough? Why did this always happen? How do I think this? Um, you know, why do I always have to work so hard? Why can't it just flow? And I think if you did have that at a point, you can really be reflecting on it at the moment. Okay, Cancerians, let's have a look at your zodiac sign. Now we will have um, Aries, which the Venus energy with your work life, the, the people you're interconnecting with in your love life, you may feel nothing you do is ever enough. Like, I'm darned if I do, I, I'm darned if I don't. Uh, you know, you might find you're returning to some of these things and, and what those emotional things are. Um, you're looking at the ability for it to be a long lasting situation and, you know, um, a firm foundation. So you could be a little bit emotional and feeling maybe no matter what you do, you don't. Um, and again, this can be in your work life, it can be in your career sector. Uh, you do need to actually utilize the third house to balance this. So I would suggest that. And funny thing enough is um, it's Virgo. So you may feel, you may have very high standards for yourself, um, Cancer. And that might have been quite emotional. Um, you know, sometimes the projection is the reflection. So that can go either side of the fence. Uh, very, very testing time psychologically. You may have a lot of responsibilities on your head. You may need to communicate uh, towards the things that you need to tie up in a sense of loose ends with your health, your emotions, and, and what those things are. And especially because we currently have Mars in your 12th house. Mars is transiting your house of psychology, having to be strong. What, what did that mean? Um, trying to think too much. Your day-to-day -day routine could be um, quite analytical in a sense and it could be very taxing psychologically. So I'm almost feeling glasses and I'm not a medical practitioner. Now Libra is connecting in with your fourth house. Now uh, wanting to have a balanced time, wanting to feel that life is in order, wanting to feel that family and connections are working effectively. Uh, you with your connections, um, sometimes it can be, I'll just say it, eighth house can be taxed. 
responsibilities inside of circumstances and commitments um, but it's the healthy codependency we do need people we really do but it's not need it's want we want to have connections uh, yes when we're younger we need as we're older we want and we want to be wanted it's the healthy energy and that can be something really strongly that you can actually look at that we all go through certain things um, that it can be a team um, but emotionally you're wanting something to resolve you're tying up loose ends relating to it. I feel you're working extremely hard I do feel because you've got Gemini in the 12th you might need a bit of a spiritual holiday have a bit of a break get grounded get anchored in try not to be so critical towards yourself um, or situations uh, yeah you, you may find that the situation is very complex and you're concerned about health which is very Virgo on nature you could be communicating and saying hey this is affecting my health X Y and Z needs to happen wounds will come up to do with your ability to see that things are changing and that can be only temporary okay yes we do have um, heavy aspects occurring to Aries and Chiron which is the wounded healer so work um, you criticizing yourself people criticizing you um, you know <clears throat> how do we do this uh, it can be lack of assistance lack of help um, recuperation ability to bounce back even your career sector so if you feel it's go 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 all the time and that you feel you're never getting anywhere there's a lot of energy around you and you need to really balance your third eye that doesn't mean to say you're coming through egoic it can be that there's too much going on in your mind I also feel relating to Libra falling in your fourth house you naturally cancer are a, um, a family sign needing to uh, tidy things up at home maybe wanting to create more balance some of you might be signing contracts some of you could be looking at your work and going okay is this for me is this routine working is this daily routine is do I have too much on my plate uh, could be proximity signing contracts um, it is a new beginning nevertheless so you may be ready to move into this next cycle where it can be working really well for you even next month I don't feel it to be bad I feel you can be looking at the circumstances inside of your 10th house and your career can be moving um, but I do feel we need to ease yourself through this um, this this part of the month and it can be very passionate so the passion will come into all work no play please rest we're not everything okay um, and, and also with your communication style you can really be looking at tactical ways of maybe working around adverse situations but I do think um, really rest uh, there could be some sense of paperwork coming towards you that you need to read and it could tie a situation up and it could be an end of a tough cycle okay thanks for joining me let's get into the guide of meditation now I had to dig deep into the thought process of this and I would say Libra we look at in the tarot is justice and balance and we currently have Aries and Chiron it's a little bit like the little physician running around trying to say hey guys you know um, this has been blocking you from being the most successful spiritual calm peaceful human being and it is like we want to get to that full card in the tarot where we don't let the past and um, wounds and blocks hold us back and sometimes it's that we have no intention that we want that to happen but it can take two three four ten to tango so what do we do in that situation it's about seeing that things can change it's about doing the work and understanding yes all good things come to those who wait uh, it's also that um, we are the best investment and not from an egoic point but by being able to look at something in a new way we can then have more energy and vitality in our life in a passionate sense to not be angry over things and and fearful and um, in avoidance at times or maybe sometimes psychologically not even knowing like I said that that wound is there so beautiful so however this comes up I do feel that due to the fact Saturn's going to be there yes it's going to ask us to be responsible for it and we might slip we might say something with Mars and Gemini and go whoa I can't believe I thought that and that has happened to me in my life many times 
it may be that the way we communicate on the things we're doing is showing us that there needs to be more balance um i do feel that due to the fact we had mars move out of taurus into Gemini, we're more active at the moment and we're craving that socialization we're craving to have those connections but we can't eliminate people to the point there's no one around us we, we need to have these ways that we can interact with each other um you know and we can actually function so i do feel it's going to serve a purpose we will go into a moment of getting into qualm and balance and i'll guide you through it sit for a moment and we're going to work through this. We okay, hate planting our feet firmly on the floor and our eyes closed. Arms open, out to the sides, back straight. We're going to take a deep breath. Okay, we're going to pull the energy from our base chakra up into the chest and blow out and back down again now balance is both in yin and yang that of what we do and that of what we feel that of what we give that of what we receive trust in the process of the cycle and for natural balance to come back we're going to thank universe for what they're showing us for the tools they're giving us and for the clarity of thought and within our power we're going to do what we can in a loving, enlightened, balanced sense. Now we're going to breathe in and we're going to count back and come out of this. Five, four, three, two, one. Anchor the energy down firm on the ground and breathe. Thanks so much, guys. Love to see you next month. Love to hear your feedback. I hope this has helped. If you are wanting a booking, you can go to the link directly below. We cover the astrology. We cover the moon energy, twin flame path, soul coaching, and romance and more. And yes, creative content is yet to come to your screen. So if you do like the vibe, join the tribe. Love and light, guys. See you during the week.